Hello, it's Sandra from Conversion Minded, and today I have two tips to help you drive consistent traffic to your business organically, totally for free. Before I get started, I want to let you know about an upcoming workshop I have where I show you how to double your traffic and your email list in just 30 days. So make sure you check the description below so you can get in on that. Okay, so my two tips for today are number one, to know who you're trying to reach. And I'm going to get into what I mean by this. And then the second tip is to use the right traffic channel. Okay, I'm also going to describe that. Okay, so number one, know who you're trying to reach. What am I talking about here? I'm sure that you've heard this over and over again, right? Like we hear it all the time. You have to know your target audience. But I still find that this is one of the things that business owners, entrepreneurs, marketers, we all kind of struggle with it, especially if you're just starting out in your business or if you're pivoting or maybe you're rebranding, maybe your business has gone in one direction for a while and you're not really seeing the results that you want. So you're thinking that it's time to kind of shift, steer it in a different direction. And this is where things can really get foggy and you're just kind of not sure really who your audience is. I remember for a long time I was blogging and I couldn't really picture who I was speaking to. And my content really fell flat. Like it didn't really resonate with anyone. It just kind of fell into a black hole. And that's what happens when you're not really clear on your audience, okay? So I like to look at it in sections here. So when I talk about knowing your, your target audience, of course, we're talking about who they are, right? You want to be able to narrow it down to, is it female? Is it male? Uh, what is their profession? What is their age? What is their job title? Things like that. But you also want to then be able to identify what they're trying to do. What are they trying to do related to your business, your products, your brands, and so on? So what is it that they're really struggling with right now? What do they most want to do? And then the third aspect to this is what's stopping them? So what's the pain point? Why can't they just run off and do it right now, right? So those are the three things you should really be able to identify clearly exactly who your audience is. You should be able to picture maybe one of your ideal clients or somebody that you would most love to work with and just kind of have them you know, in your mind as you're creating content, speak to them, and then be able to identify what they're trying to do and why they're not able to do it today because that's the open door for your solution in your content, okay? When you can have that kind of clarity, that's going to permeate everything that you're doing, all of your marketing, and it's going to cross over any channel that you try to use to generate traffic, whether that's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Google, whether it's Pinterest. Okay, so this is really foundational stuff and it's really, really crucial because I remember when I was not really clear on my audience, I really didn't get a lot of traffic because, again, it's like I was kind of talking to everybody and nobody at the same time. So you have to get super specific. And if you're speaking to moms, you want to be able to say that they're stay-at-home moms and that they are you know, raising two kids, that they're 35 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, her name is Patty, and she really wants to have a beautiful home. This is what she most wants, is to have a beautiful environment because she spends so much time at home and she cares for her family, but she does not have the time and she doesn't really know where to find beautiful furniture and you know how to decorate her home. So she doesn't have the time or the resources really or the know-how, right? So that's what's stopping her. She doesn't have time and then she doesn't have time to even discover what the resources are, what where she should be shopping, things like that, right? So if, say you're an interior design consultant or blogger and you have moms as your target audience, you want to get that specific with it. And that way you're going to be able to share content that really speaks to them and grabs them and connects with them because you're going to be like you're inside of their heads. And it's a huge difference between having a vagueness about who your audience is, right? You should be able to put a face on it. You should be able to picture this woman, Patty, in her home, struggling with her kids, trying to clean the house and just kind of frustrated with her Ikea furniture or whatever it is, okay? 
So that is really number one, get crystal, crystal clear and be able to identify the who, the what they're struggling with and the why they're not doing it already. Okay, what do they wanna do? Why can't they do it today? Now let's move on to number two over here and that's the channel, okay? The, the best channel to be driving consistent traffic. Now I'm really talking about organic traffic here. I'm not talking about paid traffic and I'm gonna explain why a little bit later. Okay, when we're talking about organic traffic channels, we're dealing with um, Facebook, we're talking about Instagram, Twitter, maybe LinkedIn, and we're also talking about Pinterest. Now, when people ask me this, and people ask me this all the time, what channel should I be focusing on? I, my first answer is always Pinterest. And I'm gonna tell you why this is so, this is like a, just a game changer for businesses. Because Pinterest is so unlike all of the other channels. It's not like Facebook, it's not like Instagram. It's completely set up differently. It's not actually a social channel at all, okay? That's a big, big deal. Which means that you don't have to follow those social norms. You don't have to be engaging and commenting and trying to go into Facebook groups all the time and share your content and have these spreadsheets of you know where you're sharing your content and everything. Pinterest is set up completely differently and it's actually two different things. Okay, Pinterest is on the one hand a social bookmarking site and on the other hand it's a search engine. Much like Google but with beautiful images and a lot of eye candy. Okay, so when you think about Pinterest, think about Google, think about YouTube, think about how people are actively searching and seeking out information. And that's what you would use to drive your Pinterest strategy. Okay, and this is just a huge game changer because when you approach your traffic channel like that, that's what I call it, when you approach your traffic channel like that, you, you realize that what you're really going for is to drive traffic to your website without you having to be constantly doing something to, to you know, get that visibility, right? And Pinterest is the channel that allows you to do that because of this combination of the social bookmarking where you have groups and you have tribes that are actively pinning your content for you, sharing it for you, sharing it to their audiences, sharing it to their networks, right? And then on the other hand, you have this search engine aspect where you have people searching in the search bar for topics related to your content and you're, you have the potential to appear as long as you get this Pinterest strategy right. So the combination of these two things means that you can be driving traffic for a long time and there's something incredible about Pinterest that Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, they just don't have. They have Pinterest has a very long shelf life for content. So you can pin something and it can kind of start taking off months and months after you pin it so that you're just continuing to get traffic. I think one of my most popular posts is from a pin that I shared a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it's still driving the most amount of traffic to my website. So that's huge. The opportunity there is huge. And even though you may be thinking of Pinterest from the old days where it's all about recipes and DIY and fashion tips and things like that, where it's just kind of like a playland, uh, it has really changed. It's changed dramatically. There are huge opportunities for businesses, especially businesses in the creative fields, especially product-based and e-commerce and coaches and consultants. When you picture about Pinterest is a, a place where people are very open. They're on there looking for ideas. They're looking for how to do things, how to make things, where to buy things. They're really open to whatever it is that you have to share with them because they're actively on there searching and seeking, looking for ideas. So, you know, when you can really embrace that, you can use that to drive your Pinterest strategy and have that consistent traffic and then once you have what I call that traffic engine humming on Pinterest, then you can move on to your next channel. But I feel like it's really important to have established that solid traffic base because then when you move on to the next channel, you're just layering it on top of it. 
And now this kind of starts getting into why I feel like organic traffic is what you want to reach for first before you start doing paid traffic. The reason here is that paid traffic, because you're paying for it, you have to be really tight with your whole business model, really tight with who you're targeting, your positioning, and your sales funnels. You kind of It's kind of like a next level thing because you're starting to pay for it. And if you don't have the foundational aspects of your business together, then you're going to be paying for that discovery. You're going to be paying for that learning, right? And you don't want to be doing that. Use the organic traffic to learn and use the organic traffic to really nail your target audience because once you have that organic traffic happening, then you know that you've arrived. When people are going to your website, that means you're using the right channel and you're creating what they want, what they already want. So that now you have such a solid foundation. Not only that, while you're experimenting with paid traffic, you don't have to worry that you're going to be losing traffic in the process if your paid ads aren't on target. So I see paid ads as being kind of the next level where you layer it on because now you're kind of ready for the next level stuff, right? So those are my tips for you today to Number one, really get super specific about who you're trying to reach. And number two, to use the traffic channel, Pinterest. I share all of this and I get deep into how to double and triple your traffic on that workshop. Make sure you check it out. Get in on it. Sign up for it. It's going to be great. Next time, I'm going to get into more of the differences between Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram and show you how you can really leverage those differences to drive massive traffic, okay? I'll see you next time. And if you like my channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Let me know because it helps me create content, continue to create videos for you to help you build your business, okay? I'll see you next time.